plan is to take Star Wars First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter, which is sat on my table just here. That's not small, so it's actually quite big, bigger than I thought. But the idea is to take that and then, with the help of my F550, it's going to make a few little sacrifices. It's motors and props. And we're going to make uh, this time fighter fly as a quad. So, I've already made a, a, a bit of an error already. And the error was I clipped the tie fighter together. And I can't separate the winglets off now. Because ideally, it would have been better to drill through, run the wiring through the internals, and you'd never see it. Not going to happen now, fortunately. But I can do something about it. The next bit, which is a little bit tricky, is just trying to work out. Trying to work out. I'm going to get the motors mounted on here. Let us forgive my uh, camera work at the uh, I'm not that good with the old man, to be honest. I'm not a filmmaker, so. <laughs> right, so, I've taken the DJI F550 arm, I've butchered it, I've cut off the. Pumps. Well, there would be like landing if it was in a 450. The pits under the motor just here have gone, and I've cut off the back piece here, which is used for screwing and mounting to the 450 or F550 frames. And I'm going to then mount that there um, and cut into the body so my props will come a good way in. But I think if I mount it there, it should be good. And I know where I can cut all this section out. Um, and then I'm going to have to cut this here, um, which is part of support, but I'm going to have to cut it so I can mount the F550 straight across the middle. Um, and then there'll be a couple of good cable tyres and some glue to hold it in place on there. And I've got four to do. Uh, then we're going to go through all the power distribution board. And all the electronics are actually going to go inside. Um, let's see if I can yeah, camera go the right way. <laughs> right, so, and then we've got to work out how to get it all in there. I know that my 4S battery will fit, so we're going 4S. Flight times, no idea yet. Um, distribution board should fit in there. The NASA, I'm going uh, DJI, NASA. Um, should fit in there easily as well um, and then other bits that might get round to is I might make the rear lights uh, thrusters I might make them I might put some LEDs in there some big ones but it's the plan I know other people have done them um, it's my first and my first try doing it it should be interesting um, I think the only, the only thing that I'm a bit in the minute is getting these into here and not making a right a pig's ear of it. Um, <laughs> I've got four to go out. <laughs> I suppose the last one will be the good one, or will it? <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. So it's uh, you know, my scale tie fighter, and just just for, just the size, you know, just the size. It is next to a, a MacBook Pro, a 13-inch MacBook Pro. But that's the 13. And it's, um, yeah, and it is actually in quite a nice TIE fighter. But why have it in a display case? And why buy it and give it to kids to play with when I get to play with it? So, it's the plan. And we'll see how we go. Right. So, my TIE fighter motors are going to be Thunder, are going to be Tiger motors. And these are 22, 16, 12, and the KV is 800. These are the version 2s. Um, They've been working on my FR50, which is where they're coming from, um, for a while. They've not got many hours on them. They're fantastic motors. They give me no issues. I've got some 30 amp Opti ESCs, which are going to be the ESCs for this. I've got um, I've actually got six motors. I could do another two, and then I could get another one of these and put it in the air. 
Um, my Nasa is going to be, I'm probably going to put in my version 1 to be honest, to begin with. I know the version 2 file is better, but I have got a Nasa V1, and since I am doing nothing, so it will probably end up in this. I'm not sure if I'm going to bother with GPS in a minute, I'm probably just going to put it in, um, like Atty flying, there's no need to have GPS for these, and it would seem pointless to be honest, so why use it? Um, you know, I know people go, oh, but it's not returned to home, but if you're flying it, and you're flying it around, kind of, in scale and fun, you don't need to return to home, you know, model planes don't have them, model helicopters don't have it, so, you know, why do I need it on this? I don't think I do. So I'll probably not bother with the GPS on this one. At the minute, I just don't see the point. So, I might change my mind, it's easy to add, but for the moment, there's no need, I don't think. Right, here we go. We've now got the uh, TIE Fighter and I've used the Dremel and made a right mess of here. But we're going to get the Dremel and we're going to find this all down. Same on same on this side. We'll get rid of all this roughness, make it flat. Um, obviously it's got a bit of its own dust. Now this is the rear of the TIE Fighter and at the rear I'm thinking here and here. These two points are the lights, so what we're going to do is, with hopefully, what we're going to do is with that, we're going to look at putting LEDs in a couple of red LEDs just there and there, um, which would be great. Now, there is a cannon slot under here uh, for a cannon. Now, I was thinking if I could get down and through, um, I could put the cannon on like a Rotation. I could just get it on a servo and just make it so it rotated nicely. Um, and it could do like a slow rotation or something. Um, maybe 360 even. I'm not sure. Um, it's possible. But actually to, to have a look inside here. And bear with me. And looking in here. So, we look inside. Now, pilot the front can actually still go. He can go there. I'm probably going to take out this, these three things out. Power distribution board on the bottom. Put a plate in of some kind. Uh, put the NASA in next, sit here. Maybe plate it again and a battery will sit on top. I know my forest batteries will fit in here, so it's about making them fit. Um, the DJ arms. Oh, oh, sorry about the camera. Oh, let's bring it back up a bit. Let's pull that back. Yeah, there we go. So back here. So these are going to fit nigh on perfect um, here. By the time I take this all this out, the prop should be able to spin and have a bit of room to move uh, manoeuvre. Um, hopefully, I've got them all correct on the same side. But the idea is to have the very end. Um, just to get it on there. So they're going to be epoxied and cable tied in place. Cable tied go through, be drilled and go through here and here. So a couple of places, one at the front, one at the back, on every arm, and that should hold. It's not, it's not amazingly rigid. It's going to have some slop in it. It's a toy for crying out loud. Um, but you know, we'll see what we can do. Um, the mistake is, of course. Putting, <laughs> putting the arms on before I cut all the rest of the stuff out but I've got long wires on my motor so I, I, can, I think I can get in here without doing anything too bad to get to the AS, ESCs and then the uh, power distribution board um, but yeah I think red LEDs to the back and then we know the front because it's nice and big uh, so yeah but so far we've cut everything out we're just uh, working on the next bit next but that's it right had time with the Dremel look at that that's a lot cleaner now doesn't it nice and level so what we're going to do is look at the DJI NASA setup for a quad work out what goes on the front back left and right so I get the right motors and ESCs um, and then I'm going to Strap that on there with a couple of table ties, run some epoxy to grip it, and it should, if I line them up right, allow me to be able to get the motors off 
and change crops if I ever need to. It's going to be a little bit interesting, but I should just be able to manage it. And then that, that, that'll be in there for good. Um, if you see how they, they miss just there, look, the pops are going to miss by about half a centimetre. Now, I know they'll flex, I just don't know how much it's going to flex, because that could be a problem, but it's something to watch out for. Um, yeah, uh, really happy. Uh, managed to smooth off all the all the sides. That's actually the good one I'm showing you because I'm not going to show you the one that's a bit messy on the other side. <laughs> it won't be seen when it's uh, flying. This is a plan. Um, it's still a bit flimsy. I'm, I can't do a lot about that. It, 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 it is a toy. It's not designed to do what I'm about to do to it. Uh, other people have flown them. No other people have made them. So we'll just we'll see how it goes. Um, looking forward to it. I've, I've got it in my head now that the cables should be able to come through here. So they'll run along here and then up through here. I'll have to, and I'm going to have to drill here, front and back uh, behind this support here. So through there and through there, it's on both sides. And I should be able to get the ESC wires, the, well, the cables through to the SCs which will sit inside there. It might look out of place, it might not, but they're black cables, so it does help. Um, yeah, um, I've tried to decide whether to put sound effects in or not. I could do a um, small speaker, quite happily put uh, some sound effects. I could make it sound like it's shooting maybe or something. I don't know yet. I don't know. Um, it's going to have a Futaba receiver. So I'm going to Futaba at the minute. Um, I have got some orange ones. They're eight channel. Um, they'll do the job maybe, but I'm not sure how I feel about putting non uh, non uh, non official receivers in these things. I'm not a big fan of uh, of not using official receivers, so I have got them. But this will probably end up with a Futaba eight channel in it, uh, just for the NASA, so I can set up extra safety like auto lands maybe. Um, but other than that, yeah. Rocking and rolling, it's all going well. Right, here we go. So, we're getting ready now to do the motor stuff. So, it's about installing on here. Um, and then we can be, just be happy, um, both in right. Um, so, the donor aircraft is my F 550. Okay, so this was originally built 2012 2013, like one of my first commercial aircraft. With a GoPro on it. Talk about dated. A little bit dusty. It was out flying today though. So it's got got Opti. I believe the Opti 30 ESCs we're going to use. I'm going to keep the Tiger motors because they work and they're so so nice um, and they're easy to flat up. Um, lift up the Tiger fighter, but you can just see the size difference in them. So <laughs> back in 2013. This was commercially working, it stopped around in 2014, I stopped using it, just for flight practice since then. Um, so it's going to give itself up, um, all its bits are going to, that are needed are going to go into this. And then I've also got oh, two spare red arms as well, 450. Um, and these I found in the shed, um, I'm going to go red. And red. I think red and black stands a better chance. I've got some epoxy. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to drill through two holes on each one. Um, going to take the corresponding uh, motor and prop and ESC for each one. So whatever should be here, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, I'll take the corresponding motor. Um, I've got to cut off these lugs, so a lug here, this is going to come off, and then the back piece as well, that's going to get cut off. Well, I'll take the four motors I need, and the ESCs I need, that are wired correctly automatically, just to go straight in. Um, that way it makes life a lot easier um, when you've got the software. So I'll just look at the DJI um, setup app and just see what it says for each front, left, front, right, just so I know what I'm going for. Um, they're Gemfam props, if you're interested or not, they're probably, I don't even know if they exist anymore, these, I forget what they are, these are 
these are ten these are ten ten inch props by four and a half. Oh look at that, I've got a pigeon in the background. They are very annoying around here. Let's see if we can get rid of them. Right, here we go. So um, this is now last little update. So the arms are now glued in. It's just set in now. Um, the cable tied. Really, it should be, I would recommend, a carbon rod um, all the way through. Um, motor mounts on each end of the carbon rods. Um, and that way it'd be a lot, a lot stronger structure. Um, and before you put the winglets on, I would also recommend that you um, that you, you glue them in or you reinforce that area because if you look at this, look at this, I don't know what that's going to do to the flight. But it's going to make it a bit interesting. It's got a bit of a wobble. So that would be interesting. Although once it's picked itself up it might firm itself up so we'll see, we'll see. This is the back of it. Um, so motor choice I had, I had these big T motors, these are 28, 14s by 10s, and the props are, mm, I've got 11s, 12s, 12s. But we're actually going with these, and these are T motors, and these are 22, 16s by 12s, and they fit straight on the DJI. They're a, bit, they're a lot smaller, but, you know, <laughs> big difference there. Um, both of them are four less, I think. These two motors, these were the big ones, were on a Vulcan Mantis I had on 4S for some crazy reason. Not sure why. Uh, and these little babies, of course, are from the F550, which is now gutted. Uh, so I F5 parts, we went for some Gorilla Glue Epoxy to use, and it says so it's in five minutes for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. Yeah, well. Um, the glue might be strong enough, but I'm not sure if the rest of it is. <laughs> so let's find out how good Gorilla Glue really is. Um, but yeah, I'm happy. Um, done the best of the bits I've got. Um, yeah, we'll see, how, we'll see how it goes. It's got two choices at the end. It'll either fly or it'll crash in style. But we don't mind. So far, so good. Uh, that's it for this part. End of part something. Yeah.